Prime Minister, you have uh, talked about all your reforms in Canada. Maybe uh, I will come back. But if, we t if I take the context, which is so important, and as a G20 country, what, and having listened to um, President Calderon, quels sont les grands objectifs que vous prévoyez pour la région
very high level of spending of uh, the Canadian public sector on science and technology research and innovation. The fact of the matter is we don't have the private level of spending that would match that and we haven't seen the kind of private sector results and results in commercialization that we've been seeking. So uh, one of the first things we did when we announced our first science and technology policy was putting uh, a substantial new emphasis on commercialization and the encouragement of partnerships between researchers and the private sector. And, you know, that, to be frank, that initially caused some pushback in the academic community, but our experience has been that the Canadian academic community adapted uh, very quickly to that, and we saw the changes uh, we want there. We haven't seen the changes we really want to see on the private sector side. Now, this is, a, of course, a great generalization because there's, of course, Canadian companies that are uh, cutting-edge innovators, but broadly speaking, the Canadian uh, the Canadian uh, business side of the economy is not as, as innovative as it needs to be. Uh, we've done a report on that. That report has looked at a range of our expenditure and tax policies and government structures, given us some pretty sweeping recommendations. And while we don't necessarily subscribe to all the recommendations, we certainly subscribe to the diagnosis of the problem and to the nature of the kind of changes that have to be made and we will be uh, we will be making those. I would say this though, it's you know, we're not under any illusion. This is a longer term culture shift that has to happen in many segments of the Canadian economy, but we're certainly prepared to work with business to see that happen because I agree with you. It isn't just necessary for advanced economies in the future to continue to work hard and invest well and, and, and make uh, good decisions. Uh, the nature of our economy is we have to be innovative, we have to be uh, at the high end of the value chain, and the innovation is going to be critical. Can you, can you expose, you can, if I call it Canadian model, and I, 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 I should tell you, Prime Minister, you know in our uh, competitiveness report, which we um, uh, publish every year, you see Canadian banks rank usually as the soundest uh, banking system um, and uh, uh, we have seldom so many references to a statement which we are making um, compared with this one. Now, um, you have an a kind of model. Can it be exported to us? Um, I think some aspects are more easily uh, exported than others. Let me give you a couple of, of examples. The one you asked about the banking system. Uh, you know, through the G20, through Basel III, through the work we've been co-chairing with India on uh, uh, international financial regulatory reform and the work, obviously, that Mark is doing through the Financial Stability Board, we are trying to encourage uh, international practices and international forms of regulation that look very Canadian, that are, uh, uh, I think, uh, strong, uh, prudential, uh, comprehensive, but at the same time not excessive or punitive or uh, that attempt to micromanage financial institutions. That's what we're trying to do. I think we're having some success. The part of the model that is more difficult to explore is the fact that uh, the Canadian financial sector has a, uh, a particular uh, structure where uh, the banking side and the insurance side are dominated by a relatively small number of large players, and that enables a really comprehensive interaction of independent government regulators with the people that they are regulating, and keeping that independence, but also that interaction and flow of information and understanding of the, the real world is something that would be difficult to replicate in Europe at large or in the United States. So there are some limits, but I think broadly speaking, we can do that. Another aspect, I think, of the Canadian model uh, is that, uh, you know, I do think among certainly developed countries, we really have been for a very long time on the cutting edge of incorporating, accepting, and incorporating, and benefiting from great cultural diversity. Now, I'm not sure that we have made the full use of that in terms of international trade that we really should be making of it, but we certainly have, for the most part, uh, created a society where uh, cultural diversity has led to greater mutual understanding among people rather than to start divisions and, and get
ghettoization of, of the population. Uh, that, you know, that's obviously a model that has developed because of Canada's unique history and practices over a long period of time. And while I think it's essential in all parts of the world, especially developed economies, it's obviously not something that uh, you know is easily learned or exported overnight. Prime Minister, you have here in the room um, some of the most prominent uh, Canadian business leaders. Um, if you had one wish, it's a good opportunity outside Canada. You have a wish to see your business leaders. What would it be? A wish for my business For leader? your business leaders. Well, of course, we always call them support the government. Uh, <laughs> and, and look, uh, actually, Canadian business community has been very good about supporting government initiatives that are uh, that are helpful to the economy. Uh, look, as we say, our biggest uh, our biggest uh, wish with Canadian business is is uh, you know just a sector that is uh, more innovative, that is you know looking broader at opportunities beyond merely our own market and as that of the United States. But I think in fairness, uh, Professor, the business leaders who are represented here are probably already in that category. So uh, our work is really with the broader business community. So you can be proud of your business community. We're very proud of them, especially when they're right in front of me. And I hope they are proud, and I hope they are proud of uh, Sir Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the time.